Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're going to ask that we welcome you here this afternoon to 1203 Pine Street, Town on Maryland, where yours truly came to our youngest mm -hmm. pastor. We welcome you to our Good Friday uh, service. We pray that God will bring to remembrance as we deliver the word in song and as the word is preached, that we might remember what God did for us through his one and only son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we welcome you here again this noonday for this Good Friday service, and we ask if your, if your phones have, are not on mute, we definitely will please mute your phone that we might not get it. Amen. 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 We gather today to remember, to remember a story mm. that is the heart. Amen. Amen. Our sinner words. I bring to you the dry ground in my life. I bring to you my troubles. Oh God, don't be far away. Come quick and help me. I call to worship. If you're able, will you please stand? <clears throat> my God, my God, you are the Holy One. You have been my God since I was in the womb. You are the one who gave me life. You do not hide your face from me. You listen when I cry out for help. You are the one who gives me life. Let all who are suffering, let all who remember the sovereign, worship, praise, and honor God, the giver of life. We'll have a few the selection after which we have an opening prayer by Sister uh, King.
strong deliverer, holy God, we offer praise to you in this congregation because you have heard our cries. You have remembered and answered us. You have been our strength and our hope. With confidence, we enter your holy presence, remembering Jesus, who led us to you through the courageous power of his life and the mystery of his death. We draw near with true hearts, bent on praising you and living for you in the name of our brother who carried the cross and in the power, in the power of the spirit who rested upon you. Amen. 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 Our prayer of confession. Forgiving God, we speak these words and sing these songs of praise, of faith, with a confidence we do not always have. We remember times when we felt alone, wondering if you even heard us. We know what it is to feel sick in spirit, to follow our own inclinations, and to wander far away. We are the very ones that Jesus came to find and help. So we put ourselves in your hands, you who make all things whole, God, the giver of life, Jesus, our Savior, our brother, and the spirit that carried Jesus' breath back to God upon his death. We rest, we rest, we rest secure in your mighty love. Amen. 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 We praise God and thank uh, Sister, uh, thank the choir for you are my strength. Yes. Praise God. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Thank uh, Sister Penny for taking us to the throne of grace and Sister Allen for our prayer of confession. At this time, we're going to have words of assurance by Sister Patricia Garner. Amen. My friends, Jesus opened a new and living way to God. Through him, we are cleansed from the regrets and wrongdoing. Let us hold on to the confessions of our hope, for God who promised healing and forgiveness is the life. Amen. 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 Now we're coming, we're about to get to the meat of the thing. Amen. 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 We're about to get to the meat of the thing, the introduction to the word. My beloved, we gather here today to remember a story that is at the heart of our faith. The story of Jesus' last night and day. The story that ends in his execution at the hands of a political and religious leaders. Truly Jesus became the steward or the servant who was despised and crushed, who unjustly bore punishment. And yet the mystery of our faith is that is his anguish leads to our hope. And the dry ground of his betrayal, crucifixion, and burial becomes the garden of our new life. So today, we linger on the path of his suffering and accompany him to his grave.
until I reach that golden strand. Just beyond the river. I watch and I wait. Yes, yes. Until I reach that golden strand. We thank God. We thank God for the cross. For had it not been for the cross, we wouldn't be gathering here this day. But because of the cross, hallelujah, we're here. Praise God. We're going to ask now that you would pray for our preachers as they come forth to deliver the word. Pray for them and pray with them as they come. Our first word is going to come to us from Sister Jacqueline Kimball, after which we have our second word by Sister our lay servant, Darlene Taylor, and then the third word, our CLM. Christopher Wakeford, sing it. Pray for him and with him as his Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I did a sign for your hearing this afternoon text, which is found in the Gospel of Luke. I will be starting with verse 33 of chapter 23. And it reads as thus. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share your word with others. Now, Father God, please decrease me. Hide me behind the cross so that the only thing resonating is your word. You are my strength and my yeah. yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our verse of emphasis is verse 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But let's back up for a moment. Our text mentioned that they crucified him. We cannot begin to imagine the agony that Jesus endured while upon the cross. But we all know the story, don't we? The physical suffering was horrifying. By the time he got to the cross, he had been beaten within an inch of his life. His back had been torn to shreds by whipping him. His face was disfigured and swollen where they had ripped out his beard by the roots. On his head, a crown of thorns stuck, struck, stuck under the skin. They laid the cross out on the ground, and they laid the body of Jesus on it. They pierced his hands and his feet by driving spikes through them. What happened that day was horrendous and horrible. Yet Jesus said in Luke 23 and 34, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. His prayer is shortened to the point. Jesus addressed God as Father. What a powerful word that is coming from the lips of Jesus. It is the first word that was spoken by him as he hung on the cross. Father is a word of relationship. God the Father has an extremely intimate relationship with God the Son. Mm -hmm. One of the mysteries that we know is that Jesus was fully God, and yet he was also fully man. Mm -hmm. He had a oneness with the Father, yet at the same time he had a separateness from the Father. But no matter what he was going through, he consistently look to the Father. Oh, yes. In the book of John 10 and 30, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Yes. Jesus spoke as being one with the Father. I like the fact
fact that we can also call God Father. Yeah. 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 All because of yeah. his son, yeah. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. 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 As Christ hung upon the cross, robed in human flesh, wrongly accused and beaten, he prayed to the one he knew he could always depend on. You see, the prayer is about relationship. It's about faith, hope, and trust. It's about knowing the one who knows us best, the one who will never leave us or forsake us, the one who will walk with us, even through the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus is hanging upon the cross. He is beaten. He's bloody. He was bruised. He could hardly move, but he still has the power of the Father on his side. Amen. He could still cry out to the Father. If this had been you or I hanging upon the cross, I don't think forgiveness would have been the first thing on our mind. My prayers probably would have been directed towards my own needs and my desires. Like, escape me from this suffering, please. Mm -hmm. But Christ is not concerned about his physical well-being. He is not praying that the suffering might end. He is not even seeking a means to escape mm -hmm. this offer of torture and death. Mm -hmm. He is praying for the needs of those who are responsible for his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Christ could have prayed for anything mm -hmm. at that moment. He could have prayed, Father, destroy them. He could have prayed, Father, condemn them. But he didn't. He prayed for mankind's greatest need. He prayed for our forgiveness. As Christ endured the torments of the cross, his genuine passion was revealed. His desire was to see men and women receive forgiveness and salvation. Mm -hmm. His passion was to provide for the redemption. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 53 and 5 says it this way. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes. And with his stripes. And with his stripes. We are healed. The first words from the cross are for forgiveness and salvation. Who was Jesus talking about when he said, Father, forgive them? Who are the them? Was it the Roman soldiers who cruelly tortured and crucified him? Yeah. What about Pilate? Mm -hmm. Was it Pilate the one who tried to wash his hands mm -hmm. of the whole matter? But he still allowed Jesus to be taken to be crucified. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was it the crowd uh -huh. who verbally mm -hmm. assaulted him? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Luke notes that they were deriding him. Shaking their heads and mocking him. Mm -hmm. And what about Judas? Mm -hmm. Didn't Judas help kill Jesus? Yeah. He was with Jesus for three and a half years, mm -hmm. and yet yeah. Yeah. he betrayed him. Yeah. 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 Or was it the Jewish religious leaders who, from their own jealousy and spiritual blindness, conspired with the Romans to kill him? For all of these people, he prayed, Father, forgive them. Yeah, yeah. But there is someone else included in Jesus' prayer. Someone for whom Jesus was pleading from the cross for God's mercy to be extended. We, you and I, are among the them. Jesus was praying for us. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. 
my mind over. The answer is that in a profound spiritual sense, we were all there. The entire human race was there at the crucifixion. The death of Jesus was an event that transcended time. Jesus' prayer gave voice to what Jesus was doing on the cross. He was offering himself to God, his Father, as an offering of atonement. In this moment, he was both the high priest pleading for atonement for the human race and also the offering itself. This sacrificial act was for those who had come before and for those who will come after, just as much as it was for those who heard his words that day. You and I were there when they crucified the Lord. In a sense, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive Adam. Father, forgive Jackie. Forgive those in our churches and those on the streets. Forgive those in the suburbs and those downtown. Forgive those in this country and those on the other side of the world. Father, forgive them. This is a power of the word Jesus cried out from the cross. They were prayed not only for those who stood by at the cross, but also for all of us, all of humanity. If forgiveness is to come, Jesus needed, Jesus needed to go to the cross. Hebrews 9 and 22 tells us, with blood, almost all things are purified. Yeah. <laughs> and apart from blood shedding, mm-hmm. forgiveness does not come. Mm-hmm. So it is my sin. Yeah. It is your sin yeah. that sent Jesus yeah. to the cross. But the prayer is even more. It is a prayer to cover those who are unaware. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Surely in this world there are those who have been exposed to the truth, to the word of God. There are those who have heard the teachings of Jesus. There may, they may even acknowledge that he was like no other man. They know that Jesus is special, and yet they reject him. With them in mind, Jesus cried out, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. There are those in this world who call themselves Christians. But are they really? They may even go to church on Sunday. But who are they following come Monday? They don't take the teachings of Jesus seriously. In their hearts, they have no concern or desire to be holy. With them in mind, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. There are many in this world who have no clue about the true nature of Christianity. They are unaware of God's plans for their lives. They are unaware that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Again, with them in mind, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Finally, the words of this short prayer are powerful. God is eager to forgive each of us. And note that I said eager, not reluctant, or willing if he has to. The Lord doesn't have to do anything. He wants to pardon us. He wants to cover our sins and forget all about them. With the whole world in mind, beaten, bloody, and near death, Jesus cried out this 
simple but powerful prayer. His first words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. time God gives us what we need. You see, I'm still working on being able to remember scriptures, but God put right before me two other scriptures that would support this scripture about what God can and will do. One of them is 1 John 5 and 15, I mean 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if you ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Mm -hmm. Did the thief not ask for what he wants? Yes. Luke 17, 6. If you have faith, faith. as a mustard seed, mm -hmm. you can say to the mulberry bush, mm -hmm. be pulled up by the roots mm -hmm. and be planted in the seed. Mm -hmm. And it would obey you. Yeah. Now, a mustard seed is really small. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be able to agree with me that faith much bigger than a mustard seed has been shown in this scripture. 
this scripture really shot its face to me and gave me food for thought. We today, we had the privilege of knowing what was going to happen in this scripture, and we knew that it was Jesus that was about to be crucified. Jesus, the Son of God. Yes, we can say, hanging on the cross, there was two thieves and a king about to be crucified. Now, I don't know much about these thieves. I wasn't there, so I'm assuming they weren't holy. They didn't follow the rules, or they wouldn't be in this predicament. In Wikipedia, they have been they have been given names. Uh, Gasta, I might not pronounce it right. Gasta, which is the bad one, which was on the left side of Jesus, and this one, which was a good one, and he was on the right side of Jesus. However, names aren't mentioned in the Bible. So I'm going to call them the thief on the left, which is the bad one, and the thief on the right, which is the good one. Look, even when, or especially when, facing death, the right side is where you want to be. Before I continue, let me just say this. Good Friday always tugs at me both ways. I say it's a dreadfully sad day. But it's also a glorious day. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Dreadful because when I think of the suffering mm -hmm. Jesus endured for you and me, yeah. Yeah. my heart contracts with tremendous sadness. Mm -hmm. Glorious because I remember in John 3 and 16, God gave his own begotten oh, yeah. son yeah. That, so that you and I could have a chance at everlasting life. Yeah. 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 My yeah. heart, mind, and body. Yeah. Responds with hallelujah. Yes. Thank God for saving me. It's all right. That's a reason. It's all right. On this morning, way back when, God, on Good Friday, I don't know. I wasn't there. But I can imagine the chaotic scenery. People crying for Jesus. Maybe the thieves even had family crying for them. Bible tells us that people were marking Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they were loud. And I imagine the, thie the thieves had wronged some others. So they probably were getting their share of markery also. Mm -hmm. According to the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, both thieves orig originally marked Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now listen, <laughs> I wasn't there, but I'm telling you, <laughs> I know the good thief on the right of Jesus had a spiritual awakening sometime that day. Right. And in the spiritual awakening, I know a physical change happened also. Okay. Yeah. I can imagine his face had a look of awe. I know his heart felt like it was about to explode. I know this because even today, after reading this scripture many times, I get the same feeling. I feel that the stronger my spiritual life becomes, the more intense these feelings get also. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. You're about to be crucified. Mm -hmm. There's a man hanging on a cross between you and another thief. Mm -hmm. He's been beaten, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, bloody, mm -hmm. and I'm sure he doesn't look like a pillow of strength. Mm -hmm. People are marking him, but yet, yet you trust that that man will be your savior. Yeah. Now, yeah. that has to be super faith. Yeah. 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 Now, I mentioned earlier that today we had the privilege of knowing that was Jesus. But the thief on the right had to have experienced a Holy Ghost awakening that day. Right. I don't know about you, but I have to say, if I were in his place, well, I'm not sure if I had that much faith in someone who was facing the same punishment as I. Now this takes me back to Luke 17, 6. That had to be mustard seed faith. Now just to mention the bad thing on the left, we don't want to be like him. Again, my assumption, he was going to remain tough and arrogant until the end. My Bible lets me know he continued to make a mockery of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You would think if one is fake, second death, maybe, just maybe, maybe. one mm -hmm. 
one would keep his mouth shut. <laughs> 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 and grant unto one last hope. <laughs> My final thought before I share this beautiful scripture conversation with you. I'm an avid reader. I have a good imagination. And I'm praying that I too can demonstrate the same kind of faith that the thief on the right demonstrated. However, I don't know, and I can't tell you how I would feel <laughs> or respond if I were the one in a conversation with Jesus, and I said to him, as the thief in Luke 23, 42 said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. <laughs> and then in Luke 23, 43, and Jesus said to him, some of the greatest words I've ever read, well, or shortly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, uh, they, they painted a picture, and I, I'm just going to continue the picture. Jesus is hanging on the cross, and as you heard, he's suffering, excruciating pain. Pain is unbearable. Mm -hmm. I labeled this just show up. Mm -hmm. Just show up. Mm -hmm. As he's on the cross, he looks down. And when he looks down, he sees his mother. Mm -hmm. And they make eye to eye contact. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I can imagine. His 33 years of existence, he's looking at his mother, and he's thinking of all that she did for him. And he's feeling what she's feeling, because she's crying. And as she looks at him, She's feeling what all mothers have felt. Why would my son go before me? And that's very painful. And I can remember being at funerals where the children had went before the parents, and I've heard the parents say those same words. Why did this happen? But as they look at each other, And it's definitely painful for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Uh -huh. Then he said to the disciple, This is your mother. This is the Gospel of John, 19, 26 through 27. They both showed up. The disciples didn't show up. A lot of theologians are hard on the disciples. 
But when you think about it, they were afraid. Yeah. And in your lifetime, you've been afraid. And there's lots of times you haven't showed up. <laughs> and I'll speak for myself. I know I haven't showed up. But at the end of what he said to John and what he said to, to the woman, because he always called her woman, and for you theologians, when he was when they were at the wedding, he also called her woman when she wanted him to make the wine. So there's twice he's called, once he's called her woman, and at the cross he called her woman. And that was a good thing. But after Jesus had said those words, it says John took her, and he took her into his house, and he took care of her. Theologians also say that women had to be taken care of because they didn't work, they didn't have jobs. And just being a woman, they suffered. Jesus did not want her to suffer. He was the first son. And he felt he was responsible for his mother. The word says that her husband was, wasn't there. It was assumed that he had died. The one thing to remember is Jesus had brothers and sisters. But they didn't follow him. Not at this time, but later on they did. But they didn't follow him. So that lets you know that the relationship that he had with John, John was family. And he loved John. Now, I want to tell you, the word says that John was the disciple that he loved. But if you read the other Gospels, you'll know that they don't, they don't refer to, him, to John as the disciple that he loved. But John wrote that. <laughs> and I'm not saying he didn't love John, but the point I want to make is he loved every, all of them. He loved all of the disciples. And he loves us just like he loved them. That's what you theologians. <laughs> At the cross, who showed up and who didn't show up? Right. For you, are you going to show up? <laughs> Diabetes, cancer, COVID, loss of a loved one. Trouble when you're married. Are you going to show up at the cross? Because he's still alive. And the word that's been written, it's alive. And it never changes. It's just as powerful today as it was when it was written. Are you going to show up? Yeah. Are you going to show up? Uh, come on, somebody, 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 us this morning, yeah. uh, this afternoon, so we thank God for the word, and we thank God for you receiving the word, amen, amen, amen. well at this time we're going to continue on, we're going to have a music, musical selection, and right after the musical selection you will have, we'll have the, the fourth word by our lay servant Lamont Spates, and then we'll have the fifth word by lay servant Nancy Freehand and a, a musical just before her word and then the sixth word by our lay leader the Nicholas Hardy pray for them and with them as we come
of Psalm 19. Folks, the first three came up here this morning. All in my sermons. But it's all right. It's all right. I've got four words. But I want to take you on a little bit of a journey. Just a little bit of a journey. Jesus picked up his cross. And he had to drag that cross. All up on that mound. Mind you now. This wasn't no two toothpicks that he got. It wasn't no two pieces of reed that he got. When we talk about over a hundred pounds this man had to drag up a hill. With people throwing at it, spitting at it, kicking at it, whipping it. Sister, sister talked about the shape of his body was in. His body was, he was ridiculed. People were talking, excuse me, but they were talking smack about him. <laughs> this is Jesus we're talking about. Our Lord and Savior. Let me go back here a little bit. I've got a fourth word. Now, you know, mommy now, I'm from a little place called Head Creek. <laughs> Listen here. When it was noon, and darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon, and at three, Jesus, with all that pain, all that anguish, all that suffering that he was going through, I imagine that man couldn't even breathe. He's hanging up on the cross. You know what I'm saying? He's hanging up on the cross. And he grabbed up and got just enough air in his lungs to holler out and cry out to his father. Eli, Eli, leave my box, Tina. Hey. Which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, the prophet Isaiah says about, my, about, about the Messiah, surely he took up a pain and bore our suffering. Mm -hmm. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, mm -hmm. and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was crushed for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. The punishment that brought, that brought us peace was on him. Mm -hmm. And the wounds we are healed. Well, right. Isaiah 53, yeah. 4, yeah. 5. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. Well. He didn't mean the curse to us. He was made a sin offering. And he died in our place. Mm -hmm. Our account, that he might bring us nearer to God. Yeah. It was the doubt of that intensified his suffering. And part of Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. It was the manifesting of God's hatred on sin. Now listen now. We're talking about a man that had no sin. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a man that did nothing but good mm -hmm. for people. Yeah. He fed people with a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. Can y'all do that? Can you go to the food line and get a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish and feed everybody up off in here this afternoon? All right, then, but Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Can you pick up some mud off the ground with a little bit of water and throw on somebody's eyes and let them see? Huh? Jesus did it. Huh? What about the cripple? This man walked around for I don't know how long, dragging that leg. But what did Jesus do? He turned around and fixed it. <laughs> hey, y'all. I got a question. Don't get it, Jesus. I got a question for you. What did 
would you do? Huh? What would you do? It was all on you. Would you back down? Would you despise your, your father? Would you turn your back on him? Or would you stand strong just like Jesus did? The whole time, that man was suffering upon that cross. And what did he do? He still praised his father. The whole time. Now, we've all been through things. You know what I'm saying? We've lost family members. Uh-oh. <laughs> we lost family, <laughs> family, friends. We've been struck with illnesses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. My God, my God. Yeah. Did you say that? My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Some of us did. Some of us did. Okay? But y'all listen to me. I'm gonna drop my paper on the floor. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to go get it. No, 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 sir. God got this. God's got me today. Like I said, before the first three were all in my sermon. So what did I have to do? I had to change it up. <laughs> On the spot, and I asked the Lord to help me. Nobody's doing it. Amen. So if you feel forsaken mm -hmm. and have no idea where to turn, mm -hmm. what do you do? Amen. You trust in God. Yes. 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 You trust that God is using that very struggle. If life looks like hopeless, a hopelessness and everything, is a fight to survive, oh, bless trust that God yeah. Yeah. one day yeah. will gloriously prevail. Yeah. Yeah. And when he has, when you are on the other side, well, yeah. trust that God will have done a parable things and parable work for you. Amen. Now, these are things that you need to do when you're in trouble like that. Yeah. Then I want to sit down somewhere. <laughs> you got to trust in God. Yeah. You got to practice God's presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the time. We're looking over there, but Harain, 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 Look at all's going on over there. How those people are dying. And all we can do is pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. That we know that God's going to make the right decision. He's going to do. He ain't going to make the right decision. He's going to do what he feels he needs to do. Yeah. But all we can do is pray for them. Yeah. And everybody else around them. Yeah. The word of God. Yes, for the people of God.
quotes from John 19, verse 28. And it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, to whom else shall we turn? You had the words of eternal life. Grant us by your spirit, ears to hear, faith to receive, and grace to live, depending upon your own. For we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 I suppose we all have some notion of what it is to thirst, although very few any of us have ever endured the agony of unquenched thirst. We live in a place and at a time when if we get thirsty, we have instant access to water. If I or you were a betting man or woman, I bet that the experience of growing thirsty without being quenched is an experience very few, indeed, any of us in this room have ever endured. Amen? Amen. But at the cross, our Savior descended into a, a nightmare and said, I thirst. Amen. And whatever else we might say of our Lord's words, we do not have to say this much. I thirst is a declaration of a film suffering. Think for a moment of all that Jesus was made to endure. His body was tortured and lacerated by the Roman lash. His scalp punctured by the crown of thorns. Pushed down in his brow, the nails pinned him, hand and foot, to the old rugged wooden cross. He was held in a position that was carefully calculated to prolong his torture, leaving him fighting, fighting for every breath. His lungs slowly filling that he drowned it in his own foot. Mm. Here is a wretched figure, broken <clears throat> and humiliated, naked and parched. He is dying of thirst. In Psalms 22, the great Psalms of the cross, David hears the suffering Savior say, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted to my breast. My strength is dried up like potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in dust of death. Here is a man whose bodily Agonies are aggravated to unimaginable depth by torture of unquenchable thirst for glory. But you might say, we ought to remember that this man, this man with a true body and a reasonable soul, this man is more than a man. Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he is the divine son the Lord of glory, the second person of the blessed trinity, infinite, eternal, unchangeable. And yes, he is, but that doesn't for a moment minimize the depth of his suffering. In fact, it adds a layer of wonder to them beyond our comprehension. The one who made the expanse 
and separated the waters from the waters as the creation. Narrative in Genesis 1 puts it, the one who gathered the waters together in one place and called the dry land earth. And the waters cease. At the end of the book of Job, you remember the famous confrontation between God and Job. And we're told that unlike Job, the Lord shut the sea of the door. He entered into the springs of the sea and walked into the recesses of the deep. He cleft a channel for the rain, to bring rain, to satisfy the waste and the desolated places. He is the Lord of the waters. And here he is now hanging on the cross, bleeding out between two criminals, thirsting desperately even for a cup of water. Why should he be? Why? Why, after all, should he endure it? The God man, when just with a word he might end it all and slake his thirst and end his pain and stop his suffering. Mm -hmm. Why? Why should the God of the waters thirst? The answer, at least in part, has to do with resolve. His determination to fulfill the mission entrusted to him. Mm -hmm. It's a word of suffering, obviously, profound, horrifying suffering, a word of submission to the will of the Father, of a resolve, no matter the cost, to obey all that God mm -hmm. requires of him mm -hmm. to secure our redemption. Mm -hmm. At the cross, when he cries that I thirst, he is drinking the drugs of the cup of wrath without mercy. That we might drink the cup of mercy without wrath. This is a word not just of suffering and not of submission, but a word of substitution. And so he cries, I thirst. He does it so that I, who deserve, you who deserve mm -hmm. to join the rich man in hell might never thirst again. Mm -hmm. He was made to thirst that he might keep his promise to us. Mm -hmm. Whoever mm -hmm. drinks of this water, I will give him will never be thirsty again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the water that I give him will become him in a spring of water Welling up to eternal life. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So true? If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of water. Tell the Lord, thank you. The water that gives life. The water satisfies. The biggest thirst of our hearts. The water that sustains us when all the wells of the world run dry. They're broken sisters. Well, there is no water that flows only from one spring. You can draw from one well. There was a spring open here at the cross when Jesus said, I thirst. There he endures the dreadful curse, the anguish of unquenched, unsated longing without relief that our hearts, your heart, might be satisfied. I thirst slake, our lives sustain in the desert places, I thirst. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
In the afternoon, Jesus calls for water. He could barely speak. A sponge has been fixed to a spear and held to his lips. It was terribly bitter, but it was enough. He strained to raise his head and looked to the heavens. He cried. Concerning his sufferings were now fulfilled. It is finished. All the types and prophecies of the Old Testament were accomplished. It is finished. The ceremonial law is abolished. The substance is now come. It is finished. All the shadows are gone away. And an end is made of transgression, transgressions by bringing in an everlasting righteousness. His suffering are now finished, both those of his soul and of his body. His life was not taken from him by force, but rather freely given up. Amen? Amen. 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 So why do we call this day Good Friday? Why? I think Sister Darlene got in today. We know it certainly was not a good day for Jesus. He endured excruciating pain, soul-wretching agony, hanging by the nails in his hands for hours. Mm -hmm. Death on an old rugged wooden cross. Yes. Why? Why, Lord? Well, it was for our sake. Mm -hmm. So we can call today Good Friday. Yes. Because you see, the cross, uh -huh. the cross is the proof mm -hmm. of the powerful love that God has for us. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one, yeah. no one uh -huh. not even God, would do something like this unless he truly loved us, giving up his only son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we are, a witness to a love that was prepared to endure the ultimate in order to rescue us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tell the Lord that. Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. John wrote this gospel in Greek. And these three words, it is finished, translates into one. The Greek <laughs> knew this expression very well. Oh, it was a part of their everyday language. Yeah. Sister Kathy, I know you like that. Yeah. See, when a servant had completed a difficult task uh -huh. given to him by his master, he would say, you have done it to the best of your ability. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> when the merchant uh -huh. had made a big sale, he would say, paid in full. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And when a child 
made their parent proud uh -huh. with their achievements, uh -huh. the parent responded, well done, uh -huh. my child. Yeah. Te, te uh -huh. All those who heard this word, the servants who offered sacrifices mm -hmm. at the temple, yeah. the buyers mm -hmm. and the sellers at the marketplace, mm -hmm. the parents and the children all understood. Yeah. Can you see mm -hmm. the picture in these scenarios? Mm -hmm. See, my beloved, when Jesus spoke these words, he's not just saying that this is the end of me, for there is more to the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. He's saying his job of saving this world has been complete. He has finished the task. He has paid the price in full. He has been all our debts. And yes, his sacrifice has been a perfect one. Acceptable to the Heavenly Father, yeah. who looking down on his son, mm -hmm. hanging lice, well, lifeless mm -hmm. from the cross. Mm -hmm. And he said, well done. Well done. well done. This is my dear son, yeah. Yeah. with whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Completeness. Uh -huh. It is finished. Yeah. 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 So what is it that's finished? Uh -huh. Reconciliation uh -huh. is finished. Uh -huh. Restoration of friendships were made anew, mm -hmm. especially the relationship between God and all humanity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Forgiveness mm -hmm. is finished. Yes. Yes. See, sin represents the most devastating separation from God. Mm -hmm. wow. So the Son of God well. was sent to free us mm -hmm. from our sins. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation uh -huh. is finished. Uh -huh. Nothing else needs to be done. The work of man's redemption and salvation is now completed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, the task on which God's Son came to earth has been completed. Paul wrote in Romans 5, 8, and 10 on how much God loves us. That Jesus died for us even though we don't deserve it. Wow. See, this announcement of Jesus is saying it is finished, mm -hmm. it was clear and simple. It is one of the greatest things he said. He was saying his obedience, his suffering yes. is over. Yes. Ah. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I have established the new covenant yeah. Yeah. for my people. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. And because it is finished, well, the mission right. begins. Yeah. And what's so amazing about this is that now it begins through you, yeah. you, mm -hmm. you, and I. Mm -hmm. The mission began with redemption ended at the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now our great task mm -hmm. is to spread the news of all over this world yes. with all of our might. Yes. John 20 and 21 says, As the Father has sent me, yes. even so I am sending you. Yes. Ah, somebody knows yes. all about that. Yes. We could wish that Jesus had not left yes. because he was so powerful, so impressive, yes. so majestic. But the words from John 13 and 20 gives us great comfort in him being. These stunning words of whoever receives the one I send mm -hmm. receives me. Mm -hmm. And whoever receives me mm -hmm. receives the one who sent me. Oh, thanks be to God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks be to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So my final words to you, my Christian friends, on this day, on this good Friday, mm -hmm. is in the form of a prayer. Pray with me. Loving God, what you have done for us in Jesus' death on the cross mm -hmm. is far more than we deserve. Yeah. His death has restored our friendship with you. His death has given us forgiveness and the hope of eternal life. Mm -hmm. Everything, yeah. everything yeah. is now complete. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you yeah. from the bottom of our
Yes. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank oh, you, you can praise him this afternoon. You can give him glory. You can praise him this good Friday. Because had it not been for good Friday, there would be no resurrection Sunday. So you ought to thank him for good Friday. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all the for the preached word coming to us by our lay servants uh, uh, this afternoon. Our final word is coming to us by none other than our associate lay leader here at Union, uh, Kathy Haynes. We ask that we pray much, pray for her and with her as she comes to us with the seventh word Amen. from the cross. Amen. 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 Amen.
to the cross on Calvary's hill, he makes the prayer, the proclamation, Father, Father. into your hands, I commend my spirit. And Luke, the Gospel of Luke, he uses the words that were first spoken by David, the psalmist David, in Psalm 31 and 5. And David, in that psalm, he talks about being in great anguish, and he talks about being abandoned by friends and rejected by enemies. But most of all, the psalm celebrates the confidence and the trust he has in God. And Jesus picked up that same prayer, and he proclaimed his confidence and his trust in God. He was executed as a criminal by the hands of men. But he trusted the God of love, yes. grace, and mercy yes. to deliver him. Yes. He was executed as a criminal by the hands of men, but he trusted God to vindicate him, to exonerate him. No, God did not deliver him from death by crucifixion because this, you see, was an essential, essential element in the divine plan. Yeah, yeah. But beyond the cross, yeah. beyond the cross yeah, yeah, yeah. was something marvelous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus entrusted his spirit into God's hands. Yeah, yeah. And these words, hallelujah, it gives us hope, hope. for what is coming uh -huh. on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He commanded, he committed his spirit, and he trusted his all everything to God. Mm -hmm. Father, I entrust in you my entire being, for I have now fulfilled the purpose, the yes. mission that was set out for me in yes. this world. Yes. I have completed the task, yes. and I can do no more. Yes. For it was at the cross of Calvary yes. that Jesus fulfilled the plan of salvation. Yes. For today, You've already heard about the forgiveness of the soldiers that nailed him to the cross. The people that gave him the authority, gave them the authority to do this, that ruling empire that gave them the authority to scourge and whip and punish him. But it was at the cross that these same people, they found forgiveness. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Yeah. And it's through the proclamation of the thief on the right. <laughs> Knowing that Jesus had done no wrong. Yeah, all right. He decided to believe in him. Yeah. And that's where faith yeah. found its way yeah. to the cross. Right. Today thou shalt be with me yeah. in paradise. Right. And it was through Jesus' mother, Mary, and John the disciple, mm -hmm. that we are to love our families and care for yeah, them yeah. under all circumstances. Yeah. You see, they're precious gifts from God. Yeah. You see, love found its way uh -huh. to the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Woman, behold thy son. Uh -huh. Behold thy mother. Uh -huh. And because of the sins of the world that Jesus took upon himself, well. because of the physical agony that he suffered, being alienated from God, mm -hmm. it created a separation yes, between God and the Son, yeah. between God and humanity. Yes. Therefore, mm -hmm. separation, separation found its way at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My God, my God, why hast wow. thou forsaken me? Yeah. And I thirst. Yeah. However, Jesus when he mustered up enough strength, mm -hmm. he looked all around. Yeah. And he saw that humanity was at the cross, and yeah. he saw the separation. Mm -hmm. I believe he also saw love standing there in front of him yeah. through his mother. Uh -huh. He found faith mm -hmm. on the right side uh -huh. through the feet. Well. And forgiveness uh -huh. standing all around him, yeah. the soldiers yeah. and the mob. Yeah. Yeah. And when he saw all of the elements, well. Of God's plan of salvation uh -huh. at the cross. Yeah. The gap of separation yeah, yeah, yeah. had been bridged by the shedding 
of his blood. Oh, and he was able to cry out in his spirit. Now let's stop. Don't reach. Then, then he was able to offer his final cry. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And if I can use my own imagination, it was like it was like a to-do list or a checklist. Mm -hmm. The work of redemption, complete, mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. Ransom for humanity, oh, paid in full, uh -huh. check. Wages <laughs> of sin, death is wiped clean, right. and the penalty is released, check. Mm. 
And the psalmist said, at the cross, where my Savior died, where from sin, sin I cried, it was there to my heart that the blood was applied. Singing glory, glory to his name. I'm in his hands. Just picture it. We're all standing at the foot of the cross. Glory, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory, glory to his name. I'm in his hands. You see, living, he loved me. Died and he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Come Sunday morning, he rose and he was justified. He's free to me. And I know one day, one day, he's coming back. Oh, glory, he's dead. I'm in his hands. Hallelujah. And I'm like, I can pick up a refrain from at the cross. It was but drops of grief. Can near repay the debt of love that I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. You're at the foot of the cross in his hands. See, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there. There by faith, I received my sight. And now I am happy. I am happy. to know that at the cross that Jesus had us all on his mind and that it was because of the cross for that. we're going to have a response now to the word by our sister Renee. Jesus servant of God and our savior you grew up with little promise, a root out of, the, of dry ground. In your life, you carried our illness, turning sickness to health. You found us when we wandered astray like lost sheep. You turned to us in our groans and afflictions, and yet you descended to the dust of death, unjustly despised and tormented while bearing the guilt of many, and were struck from the land of the living. O righteous one, our savior and ruler, who laid low in the earth of the garden, we stand in awe of you. We kneel before you, waiting beside your tomb, knowing that God's plans for new life bear fruit through you. O crucified one, you entered death Give us light. Amen. Amen.
yard for the garden. Amen. Where we can be with the Lord. Amen. And he can be with us. We thank God that we can go to that sacred place. And we can call on the name of the Lord. And when we call that name, something is going to happen. I declare that when you call on the name of Jesus, something is going to happen. Something will happen when you call that name. So at this time, we would not want to close out this service, this Good Friday service, without giving you a chance to accept Jesus Christ. This one that was hung up for our hang up. This one that suffered, bled, and died. You, you heard the story. The story has already been told. So if there is one under the sound of my voice that don't know this Jesus, you don't have to come forth. All you got to do is raise your hand. And we can pray for you right where you are. Amen. 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 God bless you, mother. Amen. Praise God. We can pray for you. And perhaps there are those that are watching by the way of Facebook or the internet. We extend the same offer to you. Because we believe in God in every way. Yes. And there is no distance in prayer. And if you don't know him, I don't like to try to give you the invitation. I like to give you the invitation that God, that the Bible gives you. So I always like to refer to Romans 10 and 9. Because then I won't make no mistake. Because this human body of mine, look, I'm going to make a mistake. So I, I, I like to use Romans 10 and 9. Where Paul declared in Romans 10 and 9. That all you had to do is confess with your mouth. All you have to confess is confess the Lord Jesus. And Paul said, thou shall be saved. You confess him and believe that God has raised him from the dead. Why, Paul? Because with a heart, with a heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So my beloved, that tells me that you got to open your mouth and say something. You can't do mine over man. You gotta open your mouth yeah. and say something. For well, Paul has said the scripture said that whosoever, and I love it when Paul said whosoever because I know then that I'm included. Yeah. Whosoever would call on the name of the Lord yeah. shall be yeah. not ashamed. Why, Paul? Because he said that no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For it's the same Lord. It's the same God over the rich unto all that will call upon his name. Now that 13th verse where he said for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be not might be, not perhaps. You don't have to hope. He said that you call on the name of the Lord. You shall be. You shall be saved. Let us pray. Oh God, you are help. In ages past. And you are hope for years to come. You are our shelter in the times of our storm. And you are our soon returning king. And we believe that when you shall come, we 
shall go back with you. Because you said in your word that in my father's house are many mansions. And had it not been so, I would have told you that I go away and I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, oh hallelujah, no more good Fridays, but where I am, there you will be also. God, we lift up the hand that was raised here this afternoon. God, you know what she said to the leader. I know she's saved, but you know what she stands in the need of. So God, we lift her up to you this afternoon, God. That you will supply her every need according to your riches and glory. Touch, heal, and deliver right now, Jesus. Father, we thank you. And oh God, we wouldn't want to close out this prayer without lifting up one of our lay servants that I know her desire would be to be here and she would be here but we want to lift her up God this afternoon that you would touch Sister Eve of God in the name of Jesus from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet touch her Lord give her what she stands in the knee of. oh God you were wounded for our transgressions. And with your scribes. We claim healing this afternoon. Heal right now, Lord. As only you can do. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory for this cloud of witnesses here this afternoon. Have your way. Cover us, Lord, with your blood. As we depart from this sanctuary but never from your presence. Be to us what we're incapable of being to ourselves. We thank you, God. We give you glory that you loved us so, that you gave us your best, and your best gave his life, that we might have this right to the tree of life. Lord, we thank you. Cover us with your blood. And when it's all over, when we shall go in to come out no more, when we stick our swords in, in the sands of time and study war no more, we want to hear you say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up. I got a place prepared for you. Come on up and enter into the joy of the Lord. But in the meantime, Father, order our steps in your way and in your word as we move forward in this realm of life. We thank you. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Father, we ask right now that you would bless the offering that has been given. Bless those, oh God, that took part in the offering. Bring increase, supply their every need. Somebody did a sacrificial offering. Lord, you supply, Lord. You bring the increase. Let this offering be done and be given for the glory and the upbuilding of your kingdom while we're here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 amen.
those that labor in the Lord with you. So I want to give thanks again to our day service this afternoon. Give them a hearty amen. amen. Yes, Lord. We wait in the darkness for the light of God's 